Good enough. Thank you. Like <laughs> and subscribe. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Welcome back to your channel. Today we're in Elton Lot, Tennessee. It's an abandoned, supposedly abandoned ghost town here in Tennessee. We're actually gonna walk through and check out the cabin and stuff, so. This is the first cabin. Located on Little River, Elkmont attracted settlers in the 1800s who were homesteaders, hunters, squatters, and small-scale loggers. They established farms and built cabins creating the Little River community. Robert Trentham was one of the first settlers in Elkmont, according to historical documents and studies. His cabin was built in 1845. The cabin is now known for his son, Levi Trentham, who left his mark on Elkmont's history as a mountaineer. I think the Park Service actually remodeled all these cabins. I think they actually enclosed like the, this is the kitchen. The kitchen, yeah. I think they actually enclosed like the bathrooms and stuff when I might get in them. There's no power. There right there's the, can't really see it in there too good, but this, it's gonna get dark, but there's the bathroom. See how they enclose them where you can't get in there? Yeah. I don't blame them. People would be leaving floaters in there if they didn't. Known as the prophet of the Smokies and the mayor of Elkmont, Levi Trentham inherited his father's land in 1905. He had the land surveyed, then sold plots to sport hunters and industrialist W.B. Townsend. Townsend incorporated Trentham's land in his large-scale logging enterprise, the Little River Lumber Company, which he started in 1900. Townsend and a group of fellow Pennsylvanians bought almost 80,000 acres of land to start the company. Right, here's the second one, number 13. I don't know the names of them. They got names. Cool. Big fireplace in this one. Yeah, that's good. Bedrooms. Yeah. Bedrooms. Another big bedroom. Yeah, right there at the bathroom. Should I check in those things? Serve the purpose. Got the back door. Back door. Yeah. That's Here, sitting here, so I'm gonna just shine where I can because it's dark in there. This one has a whole walk down. Cool. Um. <laughs> it was Daisy Towns with electric architecture. Okay. So it's on 24 hour surveillance. Because near's got like little little outbuildings back there. Yeah. And they got it sectioned off though. For some reason, don't want nobody going over there. Alright. Moving off the front, fireplace. It looks like they built a new porch on the back of this one though. Or banisters at least. Yeah, just a little kitchen here. A little washroom. Yeah. Bathroom. Pretty cool though. Yeah. For about 40 years, commercial logging was intense in the area with Little River Lumber Company cutting 560 million board feet of lumber out of the Great Smoky Mountains. Log camps, such as Elkmont and Tremon, served as homes for workers and their families during these times. 
this one there. That's cool. Little shack in the back. One room. Looks like a little bathroom in it. Cool. That's how they did it back in the day. They set them suckers up on a tree. Locust poles. Just use a post. Number seven. The two door. In the front. They call these double doors in the front or something. I can't remember what it's the reason I've done that. I can't remember. Well, there's a reason behind that. <clears throat> Number five. Pretty cool. That's dark in this one. That's awesome. The fireplace right there. Check it out. Fireplace. That's nice. Isn't it? Oh, that's cool. With the woodwork. Can't see it going through the rest of it's getting dark. Inside that one there's some kind of little I don't know what that'd be called. It was like a little hobbit house. Come check it out. I don't know there's a fireplace in it and everything so I, mean, I don't know what it would be. Oh I wonder Probably to a bathroom or something. It's like a little room. Oh, yeah. It circles around. Yeah. Like cool. oh. a bedroom type deal. Oh, yeah. It's just a little spare room. It's still got some of the old original. Vinyl floor or laminate floor, whatever you want to call it. With the expansion of the railroad by the Little River Railroad and Lumber Company, the tourism industry boomed. The railroad opened the Ilkmont Special, a two and a half hour scenic tour, and included stops in Maryville, Walland, Kinzel Springs, Townsend, Line Springs, Wonderland Park, and Ilkmont. It's weird like that one here. Shut that room. It's in the bathroom right here. There's a chimney for wood stove. Like the way they done that. The chink and that stuff in those logs. Plaster over. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Big fireplace. Ball of ceiling. In here. That one must have a wall. Yeah. It's just vaulted ceilings. Yeah. It's hard to heat up it. There's the toiletry. Wealthy visitors taking day trips began to want to stay over. In 1910, the railroad company sold 50 acres of land to a group of wealthy Knoxville businessmen called the Appalachian Club. Yeah, that's weird. Floor's sinking down on that side, you can tell. Yeah, it actually had 220 plugs. I mean, you know, electrical wiring in them. So they had to have power at some point. How this building right here is called the Appalachian Clubhouse. The Appalachian Clubhouse constructed in 1934 has been rehabilitated by the National Park Service to closely resemble its original appearance with the addition of electricity and running water. The 3,000 square foot clubhouse is today a perfect location for meetings, events, and celebrations with the charm of exposed wooden beams and massive stone fireplaces. The clubhouse is available for use from April 1st, October 31st. The clubhouse is rented on a daily basis and may be used from 10 o'clock a.m. through 8 o'clock p.m. The rental fee is $250 per day, Monday through Thursday, and $400 per day Friday through Sunday. Group size is limited to 96 people. 
reservations and more information including a map and photographs are available by searching for Appalachian Clubhouse. This is number two. The club began as a way for the men to get away to hunt and fish. Families started joining them on the weekend and summer excursions, leading to the building of a clubhouse and cottages to make the land more family friendly. Membership into this club was quite exclusive, so in 1912, three brothers from Knoxville bought 65 acres from the Lurk and opened the Wonderland Hotel in June of the same year. The Wonderland area soon became its own club, only two miles from the Appalachian Club. It all kind of comes together at one point or another in the house. Maybe somebody that watches this will tell us what the purpose of the two front doors are. Down in the description, or the comments rather. Over the years, the two vacation communities evolved into a favorite vacation spot for wealthy families to escape the summer heat. Parties would often end with a boisterous round of singing the local song Elkmont Will Shine. Elkmont Will Shine Tonight. It's kind of crazy how you know, the stuff that's built back in the day like that. On posts and blocks and everything else. Rocks. Logs still standing but the new stuff's falling. Kind of crazy. All in two mm -hmm. This material got that shabby, I guess. I don't know. In 1927, the Lurk sold 76,507 acres for the park. More land was needed to create the park, but there were people living on it. While many people were forced to leave their land when they sold to the park, the clubs were able to stay, negotiating lifetime leases. President Franklin D. Roosevelt dedicated the Great Smoky Mountains National Park on September 2, 1940, for the permanent enjoyment of the people. Yeah. I guess two or three sections of it. They're out there. That's cool. It's in the dining room. <clears throat> I like that old table. Here too. Into another bedroom. Yeah. Could you imagine though if they didn't have these bathrooms blocked off like this? Could you imagine how many logs is going to be left in our form when they got here to look at it? Or how dirty they would be? Yeah, how nice it'd be. Cause I guarantee you, somebody would take a crap in that shitter. And people are nasty. Yeah, some of the 
original vinyl flooring and said how to put the border on it and try to preserve some of it. That's what that's that's what the purpose of that is. Pretty cool. I mean it actually looks good. I guess for its age. I bet it's old too. Yeah. Right well, there's the crapper. Has windows on the bottom and has windows on the top. Yeah. That's probably the reason if it does metal things up. Let's get more rooms on here. In 1952, the however, those leases were changed to 20-year leases to placate power companies who wanted to guarantee the cabins would be there if they committed to expanding power to the area, according to news reports. Those leases were renewed them in 1972. In 1992, however, the National Park Service declined another renewal and took over the land, which included Elkmont, leading to the town's total abandonment. Today, only 18 of the 70 buildings are to be preserved by the National Park Service. The Appalachian Clubhouse and Spence Cabin were rehabilitated in 2010 for day use. Park crews also completed preservation work on for additional cabins in 2017. These four cabins are now open to the public to walk through and view. Yeah. Garden, garden beds or flower beds in front here. Both sides. Yeah. Look at the ceiling. I know. Windows up, top, above the ceiling. That'd be cool if it was like drywall or something. But. Fireplace. Fireplace. Here's the porch. Yep, here's a bathroom. Must be like a bedroom. Some kind of room off to it, a little closet. And this right here would be the kitchen. That'd be to be like a dining room or a bedroom or something there. One small kitchen, look cool. It's pretty cool looking, huh? Such water's hanging out of it. Yeah, there ain't no power in here. That's here's for sure. Cool. Must be like an entertainment room there, probably, or something like that. Something like that. Some porch, traveler's parking. Come in, see the river. All these are built right on the. In 1961, the Elmont Campground was open, bringing people from all over the country to Elkmont. The campground is still open and is a popular place for visitors to come for the annual synchronous firefly spectacle. Each and every year in the Smoky Mountains, for a magical few nights in June, one of the 19 species of fireflies lightning bugs in the park club members were key to protecting and preserving the land and creating the national park, which today is the most visited national park in the country. That's pretty much the ghost town of Elkmont, so they call it. Alrighty guys, that's a the tour of the supposed ghost town of Elkmont here in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. What did you think about it? I liked it. I, I don't know about ghost town as far as that goes. I mean, everything looks pretty cool. But I will tell you that you do get kind of an eerie feeling in some of these little cabins, you know what I mean? It kind of feels weird in them. But I ain't gonna say they're haunted, I ain't gonna say they're not. But I am gonna say it feels kind of weird in some of them. So. Anyway guys, if you ain't done so yet, please hit that like and subscribe button. And we'll catch you on the next one. Have a blessed day. A like and subscribe. There you go. Good job.